Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and today I'm gonna be testing the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So this game was just released and it took quite a bit to download, it was like 100 gigabytes. Before commenting, I recommend you listen to everything I say in this video. It will be less than 5 minutes of talking, but those are important things about the game and how it performs. So first in the options menu there are a huge amount of options on the graphical side. This time around I recommend using presets instead of manually tweaking each option like I do on other games. For most cards I recommend using medium settings, something like an RX 580, GTX 1060, 1650 Super, RX 570, something like that. Medium settings should have the best performance without destroying the visuals that much, there are still screen space reflections and a decent draw distance. Then if you go for high you get a better draw distance, better reflections, and then if you go for ultra it will just destroy the frame rate, so <laughs> I recommend you avoid it. On the texture quality option though, if you have an Nvidia card, use medium settings for 3 or 4 GB cards, use low for less than 3 GB of video memory, and ultra on more than 6 GB. On the AMD side of things, I had a few issues on my 4 GB GPU on the AMD side as I said. So for 4 gig cards on the AMD side I recommend using low textures and then if you have 8 gigabytes use high or ultra but on the AMD cards I had higher VRAM, system RAM and CPU usage in comparison to the Nvidia counterparts so not sure what's up with that, maybe it's something to do with drivers. Also I forgot to mention I'm using the latest drivers on both AMD and Nvidia that should be game ready for flight simulator so this should be the best day one experience so far. You can also control the amount of traffic, you can disable it, use real-time online traffic data or use AI traffic. My advice is to use real-time online or just disable it, the traffic type. If you use the AI controlled ones, you get lower frame rates and in my opinion it's not worth it. There is also a data connection option that controls the streaming feature of this game. So all the satellite data on real places and the photogrammetry which makes this game look the most realistic, is data that can be streamed in real time, so you'll be constantly downloading data. So far playing for around 4 to 5 hours, I used 2 gigabytes, so it wasn't that bad at least for me. I don't have a data cap, but you can cap the amount of data that it uses, so that's very useful. But also, including that, it writes to your hard drive. So if you have this game installed on a hard drive instead of an SSD, you'll suffer some performance issues, which includes some noticeable stutters. So my advice on this, if the game is not installed on an SSD, disable the real-world data streaming, because you'll get a big hit to the performance, and it won't be that stable. And if you don't have a quick enough internet connection, also disable this option, have a good enough internet to use it. So to sum up, if you don't have an SSD to install this game in, remember, over 100 gigabytes, plus a good enough internet connection to stream the data, do not enable the real world data streaming, other than that it should be okay, it didn't change performance for me at all, since it was writing fast enough to the SSD, and the internet connection was good enough to stream that data quick enough. So yeah, that's a very weird requirement on a game. It's the first one I saw where the speed of the hard drive and the internet connection matters if you wanted a good bump in the visuals. And finally on the CPU side of things, it's using less CPU than I expected. I'm using a Ryzen 5 3600 and it was enough to get 60 frames per second if the GPU can handle it. But the GPU requirements are huge. So if you want to be over 30 frames per second, 4 cores should be just fine. If you're looking for 60, apart from having a fast enough GPU to do so, I'll try to have at least 6 cores and 6 threads. But again, with a quad-core CPU, over 30 frames per second should be completely doable. For the testing, I'm going into New York City, flying very close to the ground. Then I'll do the same run, but with a thunderstorm in the background, to have a more demanding scene going on. Do not judge my flying skills, I'm just trying to be close to the ground, to get the worst performance possible. If you're flying over a place without tons of buildings, or the real streaming data part, the performance should be a little better. I use New York City as a worst case scenario type of thing, tons of buildings, trees, and things into the distance. But yeah guys, that's about it, I hope you keep enjoying the video, thanks for watching and see you next time!
Sierra is type Cessna C-25C, four miles west of LaGuardia, 1,300 feet. Request clearance to transition Bravo airspace. Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra. Request clearance to transition Bravo airspace.
Bravo Airspace Cessna X-Ray Golf Sierra.